Well, the first thing I'm, I'm just going to show that some of our sickness comes from the parents. And I'm going to give one illustration here in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. It says, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. And now, David didn't try to justify his sin. He stood up to it. He knew he had sinned. Okay? And David confesses to the Lord. Because in Psalms 51.4, David says, against thee and thee alone have I sinned. So when we sin, we're sinning against God. I mean, really, just take a moment here. God said, Psalms 51, 4 says, against thee, against you, Lord, against you have I sinned, and only you. There's one thing I don't want to do, and that's what let down my father. He has been so good to me. He's been so good to all of us. And we don't want to sin against Him. So when we sin, thank who you're sinning against. This is the verses right here. It says it. We're sinning against God, the one who has blessed us, the one who loves us, the one who came down and died for our sins on the cross, the one who suffered and died on the cross. Suffered in a way that no man today can take what Jesus took. So when we sin, we sin against this man who died for our sins. Now back in... In the time of the Jewish laws, if a person was caught in adultery, they were supposed to be stoned. But right here, the prophet told uh, David that he wasn't going to be stoned, that he wouldn't die. In verse 14 of 2 Samuel 12, it says, How be it, because thy, by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the shall also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So it's, instead of David... David paying for his sin because like I said back then the law was if you committed adultery you were stoned to death that was their law but he spared David from that but it came down on his child his child died because of David's sin now I would rather die myself than have my child die having my child die is harder on me than me dying myself I would rather die than my child so this sin was really David was, David was probably saying, No, Lord, take me. Don't kill my child. Take me. But no, the Lord took his child. But there was also a good side of that. David knew where his child was going. Amen. David knew that his child was going to be with God. And David knew that one day he would be with his child again. Amen? And that's the hope we have. That's the hope I have. Because my little girl up there, I know one day I'm going to see her again. I know. So, that, the words of God, before, if this would have happened to me when I didn't have the Lord, my little girl going to be with, with the Lord, this is, probably I wouldn't be here. And if I was here, I'd probably be druggy, alcoholic, whatever. But because of the Lord, and because of what He said, I know that my, my baby's waiting on me. My little, that's my little angel. And I know she's waiting on me. And one day I'm going to be with her. And that, that gives me a lot of hope. A lot of, a lot of strength to keep on going. So David got off easy. He didn't die. His child did. And that wasn't easy. But he also knew that he was going to be with his child again. Now there's, I showed this one here. But sometimes it is the parent's sin that can fall on the child. Now sometimes, sometimes... He heals and sometimes he doesn't. And that's a lot of that's a lot of question that's going around is why doesn't he? Which I told I've talked a little about about that already, but in Luke 4 27, it says that many leopards were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. They had many who were sick, and only Naaman was healed. Only Naaman. He was the only one healed. I'm going to talk a little, bit about, a little bit more about him later. But he was 900 years before Jesus. And he was lost at the time he got healed. He got saved later. But I'm going to show more about him later on. The Lord sometimes he doesn't heal and sometimes he does. I mean the only person here, here was his name. He's the, that's the only one out of all the ones who had leprosy. God, he's the only one God healed. And let's look at, at Elijah. Elijah, one of the greatest prophets. 
one of the greatest men of God that ever lived. Everybody knows about Elijah. In 2 Kings 13, 14, Now Elijah was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. Now, you, now come on. Are we talking about this man didn't have enough faith? For those, for those who preach that it was your faith is why you didn't get healed? Right here, Elijah, one of the greatest prophets. You think he didn't get healed because he didn't have enough faith? I don't think so. Sometimes the Lord heals and sometimes he doesn't. We don't understand why, but the Lord knows. Paul sent, now this name here, I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to get close to it, but it's Epaphroditus. I think that's his name. That's a brother in the Lord. And he was with Paul in, in, uh, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 27, and in verse 30. It says, For indeed he was sick, this brother that was with Paul, nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So right here, this brother was, was sick, was very sick. And then down in verse 30, because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death. Talking about a Christian brother who was helping Paul. Not regarding for his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Now what that means, because the Philippians, the Philippians couldn't help Paul at the time because they were so far away. So his brother was there helping him. And he was sick. And he was risking his life out there helping Paul because he was very sick. But again, Paul. Again. Is it, was it because Paul didn't have enough faith to heal his brother in the Lord? Was it because of faith? I asked that question many times because so many preachers are out there saying, well, you didn't have enough faith. Well, if the greatest prophet in Paul, one of the greatest disciples, couldn't heal, I don't think faith has anything to do with it. The Lord just didn't choose to heal this prophet. He didn't, heal, he didn't choose to heal this, this uh, brother. A strong brother in the Lord. He was there with Paul. So we got to get away from this faith. We need faith, but not, there's not faith healing. Faith healing, like I said before, faith healing depends on man. Divine healing, that's from God. God does it. We have nothing to do with it. Paul is speaking about being a faithful servant to a faithful God in, in this chapter, chapter 2 of Timothy. And in his final, in his final greetings, he says... In verse 20, this is another name, so I don't <laughs> But, so first of all, have I left at millennium sick. So a man of God, with great faith, left his brother sick. Paul didn't get a word from God again. He didn't get a word from God to heal this person. Now, just real quick, I'm going to say this. I'll get on it more later, but healing comes from God. If, 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 a man, if God uses Paul to go out here and lay hand on a person who is sick, that does not mean Paul has the gift of healing now. And it goes for the same thing today with men. They got men that are, that, uh, that are supposed to have the gift of healing. There's nowhere in the Bible that says that one man or men, certain men, have the gift of healing. If God uses you to heal someone, He used you for that moment. But it doesn't mean you have the gift. Because if he had the gift, then he could go around healing people. He had you, a person who heals has to hear from God. I can't just go lay my hands on a sick person and say, be healed in the name of Jesus, just because I'm saying in the name of Jesus. That's not going to happen. If I don't hear from God, then I can't do that. When I go visit sick people, I can't tell them everything's going to be okay. Are you going to be alright? Or everything's going to be alright? I can't do that. Because that God didn't tell me that. I don't know if this person is going to make it or not. So I don't say that. And you got a lot of people who say, oh, it's going to be okay. Well, they're just trying to make the person feel good, I guess. Unless God told them. But healing is when God tells you to go lay hands on someone. I'll, I can show that more later. I'm just showing that in the Bible, not everyone got healed all the time. And he did... He did heal everyone while he was. Now I'm going to give you reasons why. God is speaking to rebellious Israel here. In Psalms 107 verses 17 through 20. And it's talking about Israel. Fools because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities are afflicted. 
their soul ab abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Now this is saying, because they weren't walking with the Lord, they got sick. This is what happened to This is Israel. In verse 19, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, because they got sick, because they weren't listening to the Lord. Now they're sick. Now what are they doing? They're, they're crying to the Lord in their trouble. And He saved them out of their dis distresses. He sent word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now there are times when God will, will heal even when you're not right with Him. Sometimes. Okay? Sometimes. But I've showed you last week, there's many times we do something that's sin. And I'll use the example again. Uh, you get a, a brother or a sister or someone who smokes, they get cancer. What do they do? They go to the Lord, heal me. When they already knew that, that I mean, it's a known fact, cigarettes cause cancer. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's some people who don't get it, but most do. But if a Christian does it, smoke it, and then when he gets cancer, he wants a healing. We wait until we get in trouble before we go to the Lord, just like Israel did right here. There are many reasons why God sometimes doesn't heal. It might be for several reasons, like I showed earlier in the teachings, and Sharon, I wish you were here so you'd know what they were. But whatever the reason he doesn't heal, know this for sure, out of everything, out of this whole teaching, and I'm showing a lot why he, sometimes why he doesn't heal, but know this for sure, God can heal. God can heal. It's not, if someone's sick out there, it's not because he couldn't heal them. Okay? I don't want anybody here to even start thinking about that. God can heal any sickness. He made these bodies. He made these bodies. He knows exactly how they run. And He knows exactly how to heal them when they get sick. Now, if you allow the devil to put that in your mind, that he can't heal, what that does is weaken you as a Christian. If you think God can't heal, you might even turn away from Him. If you came to Him just for healing, and some, now, I'm going to say Christians, but that's the only time people come to Him is when they're sick. Now, if you only come to the Lord because you're sick, have you given your life to the Lord? Has you, have you really given your life to the Lord? When the only time you know to call on Him is when you're sick? Is that really making you a Christian? Now, we have Christians out there who do that. Christians, born-again Christians. I'm not, they're Christians but the only time they, they really talk to the Lord, pray to the Lord, or even seek the Lord is when they're sick. Do they get into His Word? Do they walk with Him day by day? Have a spiritual walk with Him? Only when things are, go bad, then they remember, oh, I'm a Christian, let me go to God. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. This is the weakness of a Christian. We forget what God does for us. He's, he's got, it says benefits here, but he's, done, he's given us many, many blessings. And we forget them. We forget the good things He's done for us. Especially when things are going good, we really forget them. Oh, everything's fine. I, you know, we forget who the Lord is. Because everything's going good. Verse 3. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. All the diseases. God said all. This includes suicide. Some people believe you commit suicide, you're going to hell. It's not true. There's only one sin that sends you to hell. And that's rejecting Christ. That's the only thing that sends you to hell. Sins don't send you to hell. Only one sin, and that's rejecting Jesus. So suicide is, is it's a murder. It's, you're killing yourself. So you're committing murder, but it's a sin, but God can forgive that. Just like if someone was to go out there and kill someone, go into the uh, prison and truly get born again, find the Lord, truly get born again, he'll be forgiven for killing that person. He'll have to pay the cost, but he's being forgiven. But same thing here. If I commit, if if I commit suicide, I've committed murder. I've killed me. 
But God can forgive that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the, so, uh, the people who say uh, he can't, uh, people who commit suicide are going to hell, it's not true. Like I said before, only one sends you to hell. Only one sin. What's the first thing we do when someone gets sick or they cut themselves or something? What's the first thing we do? We either go to the medicine cabinet or we go to the doctor. That's the first thing we do, ain't it? Most of us. Most of us. So what do we do? We go to an imperfect, imperfect situation, whether it be medicine or to a doctor, something that's imperfect, instead of going to the one who is perfect, who can heal it right there on the spot. And sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. But that's all to be the first thing we do is go to the Lord. Is go to the Lord. We don't should not put man before God. And that's what we're doing. If we get sick or get in an accident, cut ourselves. You know, the Lord can heal. Right. Oh, wait a minute. This is a cut. Well, He does miracles. He does miracles. But the first thing we do, we put man before God. We don't give God a chance to show His miracles a lot of times. We don't give Him a chance because we go to the doctors instead. Or we go to medicine. And, we, and what are we doing? We're robbing Him. We're robbing Him from showing His glory. That's what we're doing. We need, we need to go to God first. The other, not too long ago when Jody got sick, I was like, okay, I need to go get you some Sudafed or something. And then, then I remembered this and I said, well, wait a minute. No, I'm going to pray for her first. See if the Lord will heal her. Now, he didn't heal her, not right then and there. He healed her later through medicines and shots. <laughs> but sometimes that's what he uses, okay? Sometimes he does use that. He's got miracle healings where he'll heal you instantly, but then sometimes he heals you other ways. But I remembered, hey, wait a minute, before I even go get medicine or before we even go to the doctor, let me pray for you. Let me ask God to heal you. You never know, it might happen. Might. It can happen. We know it can happen. Pray first. Go to the Lord with it. We need to learn how to do that. Really, seriously, did you hear me? We put man before God if we don't do that. Second Chronicles chapter 26 verse 16 through 21 But when he was strong his heart was lifted up in his destruction for his transgression against the Lord his God and he went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. His heart was lifted up to his destruction, what that means right there, he had the sin of pride. He was also sinning because only the priests could offer burnt offerings. Only the priests, the Levites, they were the only ones. This king was doing this. And he messed up because he had the sin of pride. And he also was doing burnt offerings, which only the priests could do that. In verse 17, and Azariah, the priest, went in after him and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valid men. Fourscore, that's 80 priests. He went in there with 80 priests that were valid men. In verse 18, and they withstood Josiah the king and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, your, your Josiah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but the priests of the sons of Aaron that are concentrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thy honor from the Lord God. Now this priest was warning the king here. Hey, you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. So God sent this priest to tell this king, Hey, you're not supposed to be doing this. Verse 9, and God always warns. He always warns us. Okay, he does. In verse 19, and the king was wrath. He was he was mad. He got mad and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wrath with the priest, while he was mad at the priest, leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. The key is because the king got mad at the priest. Right then and there, right? I mean, it says it right here. Right then and there, leprosy, leprosy fell on him. Now here's this priest warning him, hey, this is, this is against God. You're sinning against God here. 
And what's this king do? He gets so mad at him, doesn't, doesn't listen to him, and what happens to him? Leprosy falls on him. So when we're, when God is warning us, listen to me, when God is warning us, I suggest we listen. Because this is, I'm reading these scriptures right here, this is what happened to this king. And if the Lord could do it to this king, He could do it to anyone. Verse 20, and Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was lep leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted, hasted also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. The Lord had smitten him. Who gave him leprosy? The Lord. He gave it to himself, I guess. Well, he gave it to himself, but, uh, I mean, he asked for it. I mean, the Lord warned him. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Lord used this priest to warn him. Mm -hmm. And what did he do to the priest? He got mad at the priest. So what did the Lord say? Okay. You won't be that way? Here, take some leprosy. Let me show you who, you met, who you're dealing with. But you know, we have a gracious God and a loving God. But I wouldn't mess with him. Right. Do you hear me? I mean, I'm reading the scriptures right here. This king, verse 21. And Uzziah the king was a leopard unto the day of his death. Now the sin of pride is what made him sick. Because he was so prideful for being a king. He thought because he was a king, he thought he could do whatever he wanted. Oh, I can do this. I'm king. I can burn incense. Listen to this priest giving me warning. I'm a king. Who are you to warn me? Right. You, see, you hear me, Wednesday? And, and believe this or not, there are those who think they're kings. There are those who think, like, I am this. Right. You know, they, the sin of pride can be very hurtful. Be, not only to yourself, but to others. So this is what happened to the king. He got sick. Why? Because he had pride. And what did God do? him? What did God do to him? God gave him leprosy. God. So sometimes when we're sick, sometimes when we're sick, look like I said a while ago, if they had other people around and they saw this king who got sick with leprosy and they were praying for him, well, why ain't God healing them? You know, maybe they didn't know that he had spoke against the Lord. Thought God couldn't touch them. Do you see what I'm saying? Sometimes when we pray for someone and they're not healed, we don't know what's on the other side. God can see it, but we can't see it. God gave him leprosy, and he died from that leprosy. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, and then, 18, then 8 through 15. But verse 1, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. Now right there, this man, this uh, captain, of hosts, this king was a great man. And it says he was honorable. And because of him, the Lord had given him deliverance unto Syria. And he was a mighty man in valor. Now, this is talking about pretty. This, this guy seems to be pretty. Uh, I mean, God's saying he's honorable. He's, he's, a, he's a great man of his master. He delivered him from unto Syria. And he was a mighty man. But the last part of that verse says, but he was a leper. He was a very great man, but he had leprosy. Then we drop down to verse 8. And it was so when Elias, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Which is what he was saying. What, what Elijah was saying, that there is a God in Israel, is what he was saying. Because mm -hmm. Elijah was the prophet. But he, he, what do prophets do? They listen. They hear from God. So this king of Israel got all upset. And so Elijah, this prophet, says, let me have him. And in verse 9, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. So Naaman went on, to his, way, on his way to the prophet's house. The prophet said, come over here. So Naaman's on his way. And in verse 10, 
Elijah sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Now Elijah didn't have to go to him. You know why? Because this Holy Spirit can go before... Just like Jesus, Jesus did the same thing. The centurion, my son is sick, or my servant, I mean. God told him, go your way. He's healed. Did God go over there? I mean, not God, but did Jesus go over there? No. Jesus just had to speak the word. God told him. Remember, everything Jesus did, he did it as a man. He didn't do it as God. Remember that. Every, in the New Testament, when, when Jesus did any kind of miracles, he did not do them as God. He did them as man, the Son of God, as man. But the reason he was able to do it, because like I said before, the Lord God did not give any kind of limits to Jesus. He says, you have my power. You have my power. And Jesus knew, knew, because God always told him what, was, what to do. Just like when he, when he was so much agony that he sweat blood, Jesus knew what was getting ready to happen. He knew he was getting ready to go to the cross. He knew that, because God had already showed him. Not because he was God and he knew Yes, Jesus is God, but we need to learn how to separate Jesus God and Jesus man. We need to learn how to separate that. People get confused, but if you really just concentrate, Jesus, Son of God, was a man. He was 100% man. He wept. He had, I mean, he was 100% man here on earth. But he wasn't 100% man because he was born of God. Okay. I better not get on to that's a whole nother teaching. But <laughs> you see, where was I? Verse 11 or verse 10. Okay. But Naaman was wroth and went away, and behold, I thought, he will surely come unto me and stand and call on the name of the Lord. Now, this is what the king is thinking, Naaman. This is what he's thinking. And, and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the leopard. Now, Naaman was angry because he thought, he thought Elijah was supposed to come to him and either lay hands on him, anoint him with oil, do something. Okay? That's what he thought was going to happen. He thought it was going to happen that way. But remember what God said? My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Remember that? But this is what Naaman was thinking. Well, I thought he was going to come to me and do all this ritual stuff. So he got mad because Elijah didn't go to meet him and do these things. I mean, all he needed was a word from God. Verse 12. Are not Apada and Farfa? You know, just put any name you there you want. <laughs> Rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? This is what the king is saying. May I not wash them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. So what this king is saying is, aren't the waters here in Israel just as good as those over there? That's what he's saying. Can't they make me clean? Naaman was very much in the flesh, full of pride. Naaman got very also he also got very angry because it wasn't done his way. Remember that. In verse 13, and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father. If the prophet has bid thee to do some thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when we he saith to thee, wash and be clean? So the officers of this king who were under him said to him, and I'll give you an example. He said, he said if they would have told you to fast or to, to, to get anointed with oil, wouldn't you have done it? This is what, it's, what they're telling him. You know, now God said this, I mean the Elijah said to do this, but you don't like it that way. But if God would have said, if God would have said, do this or this, wouldn't you have done that? That's what they're telling them. Now there's times when we feel we have to do the same thing to earn <clears throat> something from God. It's better if we just listen than to think. I don't know if that sounds rude or not, but a lot of times it's better if we just listen than to think, well, I think it ought to be done this way. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Verse 14. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Was Naaman healed because of, because of his great faith? No, this man was angry because it wasn't done the way he thought it should have been done. So it wasn't because he had great, great faith. No. All he did was fuss about the whole thing. But what did God do? He still healed him. Right. He had mercy on him and still healed him. So hey, here we have a man who, a king, who was complaining about everything and God healed him. But then we have the greatest prophet that ever lived and God didn't heal him. We have one of a disciple in the New Testament, a disciple, a man walking with God, and God didn't heal him. So are we going to understand why God heals and sometimes He doesn't? Right. All we need to know is if He doesn't, maybe it's because it's for His glory, like Job, or maybe it's because this person has sinned against the God. Now He has to pay for it. Because I've showed you those too. So when someone is sick, if they're not healed, one thing we better not do, and that's judge. Just like they did to Job. They thought Job had did all this stuff, and that's how come this sickness and all, he lost all this because they thought he was wrong, which Job did nothing wrong. So when we see someone sick and we pray for them, don't think right away, well, well they have people who, who God didn't heal because they were sinners. No, that's true, but not all the time. Okay? Remember, at that time, Naaman was lost. He was lost here when God did all this. He was lost. But in verse 15, it says, And he returned to the man of God, and he and all his company, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all earth but in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. So what he's saying right here, he says, I know there's, there's no small g gods, but the only God of Israel, which at that time was Jehovah. Okay? He was recognizing God as God. Alright? That's why I'm saying he was lost, and then here in verse 15, from, the, from what he says, he knows that there is a God now. He went from complaining to to understanding. To, to understanding. <laughs> Now, does the Lord answer prayer? We think maybe maybe the Lord's not answering my prayer. The Lord answers prayer. And He does it in one of four ways, okay? The first way, the Lord is, I say yes. And He answers it right away. Just like in Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 and 29, when Peter asked Jesus if he could walk in the water, and Jesus said yes. Peter asks Jesus, and that's what we do when we're praying, asking the Lord. And the Lord said, yes. And Peter walked on the water for a little while. But God did answer him right then and there. And in the second way, he says yes, but it's, it, the answer is going to be delayed. Whatever is being asked is going to be delayed, just like in John chapter 11, verses 1 through 43. Mary and her sister Martha sent to tell Jesus about Nazareth being sick so he could heal him. But Jesus stayed in town where he was at for two more days before he leave and left. Then he traveled to where Nazareth was and what happened? Raised him from the dead. So sometimes the Lord is going to, sometimes he tells us yes, but it's not going to happen when we think it should happen. Well, it's got to happen now because he's sick. He's going to die. It's got to happen now. Not with the Lord. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I mean, I'm, come on. The Lord said, hey, I'm in no hurry. Jesus said, I'm in no hurry. Because <laughs> I'm going to raise him from the dead. And he did. And then there's the third way. It's, he says yes, but he doesn't do it the way we think he should do it. You pray for patience. You thought it would be, okay, I'm... Lord, give me patience. And you, okay, I got it. No, no. Instead, it takes a while before you get it. You got to go through trials and tribulation to get patience. 
Just like Romans 5.3, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So we got to go, patience just is not just, you got it. No, we got to go through trials and tribulations to, re to receive patience, to learn patience. And the fourth way, the fourth way, sometimes we don't like it. But sometimes he just says no. There's preaching going around who speak about positive confessions. Preachers who go around and they preach positive confession. They're not asking for God's will. Positive confession. Ah, that's what that really gets to me. Positive confession has nothing to do with the Lord. Positive confession is totally dependent on man. It's your, your thinking is supposed to get it done. Your positive thinking is supposed to be done because you got positive thinking. It doesn't say nothing here about the will of God. All they say is positive confession. You think or you have been told just to repent over something or say something like, I'm healed, I'm healed, and just keep saying it. You know, think positive, I'm healed, I'm healed. I'm serious, that goes on out there. I've seen it on TV. I've even been in the church that that happens. That's not from the Lord. It's not from the Lord. The Lord. That, I'm sorry, but that falls under what it says in Matthew 6, 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetition. That's what vain, vain, vain repetition is. I'm healed, I'm healed, or whatever it is that you're, you're wanting. You know, we don't, we don't have to beg our God. Sometimes He heals us and we don't even ask. Huh? Because He knows before we even ask what we need. So that, that's, that's under vain repetition, just positive thinking. Just keep, just keep saying it over and over, it's yours or yours, or it's mine, it's mine. Which is, has more than just healing on here. But they use it for healing also. Paul prayed three times for the Lord to, for the Lord to remove the thorn in his side. That was a vain repetition. David prayed several times that the Lord would heal his, his son, his baby. Several times. Didn't happen, but I'm just showing we can pray over and over on something. And there's nothing wrong with it. So just uh, use not vain repetition. There are some prayers that are vain repetition. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to show the Catholics. Hail Mary, full of grace, and blah, 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 blah. The rosary. They say the same thing over and over and over. What is that? That's vain repetition. And I'm sorry, in that rosary, Mother of God, uh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, I'm sorry, my God has no mother. Jesus, the Son of, Jesus, the Son of God has a mother, mm -hmm. but not God. And I'm sorry, but when it comes to stuff like that, I have to leave the room. Holy Mary, Mother of God, I'm sorry if there's any Catholics listening to this. I'm not here to offend you, but I do want you to know the Word of God, and God has no mother. Jesus, Son of God, does. Mark, chapter six, verse four and five. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty works, talking about Jesus, he could there do no mighty works, except that he lay his hands upon a few sick folks and heal them. Because they didn't receive the preaching of Jesus, that's what the, the Mark, that's what, they didn't receive the, the preaching of Jesus. Because in verse 22, it says, And all bear him witness, and wondered at his gracious words, which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? So even though he was reading the scriptures, and they were even impressed with it. He was reading the scriptures, they were even impressed with it. They couldn't accept him. They couldn't accept him as being a teacher or a preacher. Because he was a carpenter. You hear what I'm saying? Because he was a carpenter, even though they were impressed with what he said from the scriptures, but they couldn't accept it because he was a carpenter, the son of Joseph. Now, I've said this before, you get Jesus here today, put Jesus here today, and people will not follow him because he is not, his name isn't Pastor Jesus or Jesus, MD, PH, and all that stuff. Because he don't have all, a title and all these initials, people will not follow him. Just like here. But wait a minute. This guy, man, what he says is really good. 
but he's just a carpenter. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? In verse 28, And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these sayings, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him onto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. And because of this, that kept him from doing miracles. Like I said in verse 5, he could, not, he could do no mighty works. Because, of, because what they did, he couldn't do his mighty works there. Because they did not accept him. Now there's teachings today from the Lord many people don't accept. And being that they don't accept him, is there any healing going on? He said he could only, he could only heal a few people here. Because they did not accept him. Now there's some of us, not us, them say us, there's some out there who they don't accept some of some of these words of God. Words of God. So are they gonna get any healings? Mark eleven, chapter twenty five chapter eleven, verses twenty five, twenty six. And when you and when ye stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, can we heal someone if we got something against a brother or a sister? He says right here, if you can't forgive them, then I'm not going to forgive you. And if, you can't, if you're not forgiven for your sins, can you pray? The only prayer he's going to hear is you saying, Lord, forgive me. And repent of whatever it is. But, I mean, some people might be praying out there for a brother or a sister. And they don't understand why they're not getting healed. But this could be a reason right here. Maybe they got something with, an, with someone they know, a brother or sister they know, and it's not right between them. So does God hear you? Does God hear a prayer from a Christian who has something between him and another brother or sister? Do you understand what I'm saying? So until that person gets that right, you can't pray for this person that's sick. Because if you are, nothing's going to happen. Again, another reason, maybe this is why this person's not getting healed. Just like the friends of Job kept telling Job it was his fault for what he was going through. But it wasn't. Job had bitterness, bitterness against them. Because what they were saying to him, Job got bitter against his friends. But in verse, uh, in Job 42.10, it says, and the Lord turned the captivity, capti captivity of Job, meaning, meaning he healed him, when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Not only did the Lord heal him, but his friends got saved. The Lord healed Job, finally healed Job, right? Mm -hmm. At the end. But not only did he heal Job, <coughs> but his friends got saved. When he got right with, remember, Job had bitterness. He had bitterness against his man. And it shows right here that he repented of it. And after he got repented of it, he was healed. And plus, his friends got saved. So let's look. Look at what happens when you do it God's way. Let me say this. When we pray for someone who is a Christian and God physically heals them, praise God. Praise God, right? Amen. But if he does it, guess what? Praise God anyway. <laughs> Seriously. Praise Him anyway. Because, listen, because He might have gave that person a total healing. We prayed for a physical healing so they could stay here with us. But He might have said, okay, I'm going to heal them, but I'm going to give him or her a total healing. I'm bringing them home. Amen? Amen. Seriously. Do we look at it that way? Some of us might. Some of us might. But there's many of us who, why did he let them die? We prayed for them and they died. Well, praise God. If they're a Christian, praise God. I mean, we can get sad and everything because we're going to miss the person. But we still ought to give God the glory. Because he healed them all right. Oh, yeah. He gave them a total <laughs> healing. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to stop right there before I start the other one, because the other one's going to take me a little longer. But, are we seeing why, sometimes, why the Lord doesn't heal? I mean, there, there is that question, and I really truly believe, I mean, I do, I really truly believe, God has given me the answers 
to give to whoever says that. He's given me these scriptures. Do you think these scriptures came to my head? No. The Lord, I sit in that office and God speaks to me. And He, he takes me to this. He takes me to this. And this is how it ends up. So the Lord, I really, I mean, I really truly believe the Lord said, Okay, Jesse, I'm going to give you the answer to all the, the questions that's going around. Do I still heal? I want people to know that I am still the healer, the great physician. But then I want them to know why sometimes I don't. And he's given us a scripture. I mean, I'm giving you nothing but scripture to show in the, in the Bible why he didn't and then sometimes why he did. Amen?